Hi, I'm Mark. I'm a PhD student at the European Centre for Environment and Human Health. Today I'm going to introduce my research topic, Can Nature Improve Child Development? So nature or green infrastructure, as can be seen in the images above, can come in all shapes and sizes. Increasingly, it's being valued for its physical properties and the benefits it can provide. For example, buffering people from extreme weathers and increasing pedestrian safety from vehicles. However, recent evidence is showing nature could have more direct benefits on human health. The slide on the screen display, uh, displays the multiple ways the social and biophysical properties of nature are thought to combine and interact to improve human health. In relation to children, literature has shown connections with nature over long time spans. This would suggest that spending time in nature could influence child development, which subsequently affects children's health and or behaviours much later in their lives. I did a systematic review which aimed to synthesise all research which investigates the longitudinal influence of exposure to nature on two developmental domains, cognition and social emotional development. As can be seen in, in the table here, we found a mixed evidence base, found robust studies finding evidence of an effect of nature and robust studies finding evidence of no effect of nature on a variety of developmental outcomes at a variety of ages and time points. Alongside providing this evidence, the review highlighted the most common covariates that were used in the analysis. I use this to inform the design of my own longitudinal analysis. For this analysis, I developed this conceptual model for the factors that could influence social emotional development and may also be related to nature. Clearly, this is extremely complicated, but the wealth of data provided by the Ausback cohort will help me to make sense of all of this. This next slide shows two complementary analyses which I have designed, which will attempt to measure all the relevant factors in the previous conceptual model. While the two analyses are similar, one focuses on the social properties of nature, while the other focuses on the biophysical properties of nature. This final slide shows the specific research questions that I'm addressing. Please note that the difference between vegetation abundance and park abundance, as, as I mentioned previously, one will focus on the biophysical characteristics and the other, the social characteristics. 